Today I'm going to be doing a colored pencil demonstration of this eagle owl. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today I am working on black Canson Mitans paper. This is the pastel paper. I'm using the smooth side. I'm using polychromos and luminance colored pencils, along with touch up texture and titanium white mixture for my white highlights from brushandpencil.com. I will have links to everything I'm using below in the video description. If you're supporters over on Patreon, I have the two hour version of this video, complete with a lot of real time clips, more than normal, available for you to watch now. So make sure to head over and check that out. Now let's move on to this tutorial. So starting out with this, I drew everything out with one of the light gray polychromos colored pencils. And I just have it very loose. I don't need every little detail. I just want a general idea of where the main feathers are, where the eye goes, where the beak goes. But I don't need every single little thing that I plan to draw on this. I'm going to add that in later. And I'm going to start by blocking out with my luminance, which is going to be what my more opaque colors. I am blocking out some of these lighter feathers. What I'm doing here is covering up the black. I will blend it with the odorless mineral spirits and then let that dry and that gives me a much lighter surface to work on which is going to help me to get my brighter colors. If I tried to just make this as bright as I possibly could go right off the bat, right from the beginning, it's just not going to be nearly as bright. Here I'm basically just blocking in a base to cover that black that I can then put my light colors on top of. And I find with the Canson Me Tens, this paper, the smooth side of it, has such perfect tooth for the way I work. The more I use it, the more I'm loving this. It a lot of the pencil, the pigment just sticks to it very quickly, very, you get a lot of coverage very fast. So the projects that I do on this paper go much faster than they do on either the Stonehenge or the Fabriano Artistico. And while I still love those papers, this paper I like when I want to get something done a bit more quickly. They all have things I like about them for different reasons. But I would definitely say if you've not tried the Canson Me Tens paper before, give it a try. Just make sure you're working on the smooth side. So here you can see again, just blocking in color. I'm just kind of mapping out where my general lights and darks are going to be. And I'm going to try to make this lighter than what I want my end result to be, just knowing that I'm going to put more color on top of this. This is just getting that good coverage of the black to start with. And in through doing this, again, I'm not really worried about everything being perfect. I will clean stuff up later. And in general, I'm not too worried about every little teeny tiny feather being in place either, because that really doesn't matter in the end. The viewer is not really going to notice that you had five feathers instead of seven feathers going across in any given area. What I like to do is capture the general feel. There are times where I need things to be exact, but when it comes to fur or clumps of feathers, I don't feel like having that exact exact is completely necessary in capturing the feel of the subject that I'm going for. Here I am taking the Odorless Mineral Spirits. This is on a flat Taclon bristled brush, just a small, cheap, generic one that I bought in a set at Hobby Lobby. You do not need to spend a lot of money on brushes when you're blending with the Odorless Mineral Spirits, but I will say that the Taclon bristles are in general my favorite. Going to go ahead and blend that out. I'm not too worried about brush strokes or feather marks at this point. I'm going to add all of that in on top of this. I just want to block in or cover up the black so that my lighter colors have something to show up against. And I used my polychromos a lot more on this piece than I had the previous time that I worked on black because I, like I said, I'm blocking in these lighter colors first and it allowed me to use those light colors much more than when I was working straight up against the black of the paper. Now the eye was one area I was just not able to get bright enough on its own. It felt, once I had everything else finished, it felt very dull. And so this is an area, and you'll see me do this at the very end, I came back through with Touch Up Texture and Titanium White, a mixture that I painted on. It's a product made for colored pencil. I will put a link to that in the video description. But I put that on in certain areas, and then I was able to go on top of it with a brighter orange to brighten it up later. One of the reasons that I know a lot of you had requested for me to work on black paper in the past and I kept 
declining. I don't like it because you can't get your brights as bright as I want them to be. But now with using that newer product, it's been out for about a year now, the Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture, I'm able to get the bright white, white areas. And you'll see that on the feathers as well as the eye very, very easily. So now I'm finding that I really like working on black paper. So going through here and just going to quickly block in a bunch of these areas. And I'm not worried about every tiny thing being super detailed at this point. I'm just getting that general map of where my feathers go. I want to make sure they're going in the right direction and I want them to be the right length. I'm also not terribly worried about my colors at this point. I know I'm going to come back through and brighten things up, darken other things. All I worry, I'm worried about in the beginning stages is mapping everything out. I can adjust my colors later by putting a color on top of whatever I have. Now this area is going to have a lot of feathers and look how solid that looks next to the beak. Obviously it it's too solid. That's not what I'm going to want my end result to be. But that's fine. That gives me my base to put the detail on top of. So here you can see as I come through with this pencil, look how well that white shows up even though I have all of those light colors underneath. Now I can tint that color with the reddish brown tones right on top. You'll still see the detail underneath them. Now when you're drawing beaks on birds, especially if it's a close-up like this, don't just assume the beak is solid gray or solid black. Pay attention to the little details, the shine, the ridges. Those are going to make a big difference in making your end piece look more realistic. Now I'm using my white luminance and coming through with a lot of these little feathers that are around the face. I'm just layering that on top of my previous layers. This is an area where you can really see how quickly this goes because it only took a few layers before I was ready for these details. Whereas when I, if I would have done this on the Fabriano Artistico, I would have been at least 10 layers in by the time I was ready for this stage. The pigment just sticks to this paper. It is just the most wonderful tooth in my world. I love how great this works for the way that I work. I really need to get some more of this paper. I have not yet tried it on white. I'm not sure if I'll love the Canson Me 10s on a lighter color, but I've tried it on the black and on a light blue color and really liked the results both times. Taking this more tan color and coming on top of a lot of these white feathers. Now, as I do these feathers or draw them in, I don't just want to make zigzags. It's really easy when you're making short feathers like this to just zigzag back and forth. What I want to do is make a lot of short, slightly curved lines. They're almost straight, not quite, but make a lot of individual lines. If you make zigzags, that's very obvious. You don't want a chevron pattern there. Make little straight lines or semi-straight. So I'm going to blend that out. And as I blend this out, notice how I'm letting the light, the white, blend right over the black. I'm not worried about smudging that. I actually want to smudge that so that when I come back through with black in between some of these, I'm going to be able to create more depth. Because here, I didn't even have to shade in gray over some of the black areas. The white did that for me by letting it smudge. But now when I come through with my black pencils, I'm going to be able to create a lot more depth very easily, very quickly. So I let that smudge work for me instead of getting out another gray pencil and shading that in. You can see what a difference that makes as I come through with the blacks. Some more detail on that beak. Now I will advise, this paper does not erase well. You can see where the eye is in the black shadow, where I erased a line that I didn't want. You can still see where that was erased. I'll be able to go over it with a black pencil and I've got to redraw the eye in there anyway. But you can see that easily. So this isn't one that I would recommend doing your initial sketch on. I would do your initial sketch on another piece of paper and either use transfer paper to transfer it over or use a projector. Um, Either way, even if you want to freehand it, those would still be the methods that I would recommend because erasing really, really shows. You get a lot of smudges on this paper, so you want to make sure every line that you apply is very deliberate. 
and I will be able to cover that, but you'll still be able to see it just a bit. So if you were doing a lot of erasing, if you're somebody who does have to do a lot of erasing when you're drawing things out, don't recommend drawing straight onto this paper. Draw onto another paper where you can do all of the erasing you want, trace it, and then take the tracing paper onto this paper with transfer paper and transfer it over. Now for those little feathers on his head, look at how many shades that I get in there. It's not a matter of just pick the right color and draw it perfectly. I'm going to need to do a lot of different layers in order to get that look. Some more detailing on the eye, really paying close attention to where my lights and darks go. The tape that I have used to tape this paper to my board, it's a acid-free, low pH art tape. I've got this one, this one I either got from Amazon or from Jerry's, I for, forget where I got that one. But it is an artist tape, so it's a lower tack, so it's not as likely to rip the paper when you remove it, plus it's not going to cause yellowing or anything like that, which is an added bonus. Now I'm starting to come back through and add these smaller details. And that's another area, that tuft of feathers on his head. Look at how many different values I have in there, how many different shades of browns, tans, creams, reds. There's a lot of different colors in there. And that's really important. So many people like to think, I mentioned this earlier, I just need that one right color. If I knew what perfect color it was, my work's going to look realistic. That's really not it. You're going to do a lot of layering and it's more about your values than your color anyway. Just softening out that outer edge so that it kind of blends into the black of the paper. Polychromos is nice because it sharpens to such a fine point, so these little tiny areas, it's really good to get in there with. You just want to really pay attention to your reference photo. If your goal is to create a very realistic looking painting or drawing, you want a good reference photo and you want to pay close attention to that. I know a lot of artists, especially young artists, get in their head that in order to be a good artist, you have to draw from memory. I don't know where that idea or concept comes from, but it is absolutely not true. Every artist you know of who is painting something that is very realistic, they've got reference photos to look at or they're drawing live from the subject where they can see how everything goes. You're, you don't, if you draw from memory, you can have something that looks like an owl, but it's not going to look nearly as realistic unless you've drawn hundreds of owls where you do have that more memorized. But for the majority of artists, you're going to want that reference photo. Get a good reference photo and really study the details. One of the questions that I've often had from students is how did you even notice that detail? They'll be drawing and they're, they're not getting as much detail as they want. It doesn't look as realistic. And if I come over and help, they're like, how did you even notice? I didn't notice that. That comes with time. I did not always notice those details. The more you paint and draw, the more details you're going to notice and the more realistic your work will start to get. But be very aware that you're looking for those little details and really try to copy what you see. Look at those feathers as abstract shapes. If you view it and think, okay, I'm drawing feathers, a lot of times you end up drawing what your brain remembers of a feather and not what you see in that reference photo. Really study that reference photo. Working upside down is another really good way. Turn your artwork upside down, turn the reference photo upside down and draw that way. That's going to force your brain to see the shapes and shadows that are actually there instead of what you think is there. And it makes a really big difference in making your work look more realistic. The other thing is to be aware of how long something takes. One of the reasons that a lot of people have a hard time creating a realistic piece is they expect it to be done too quickly. They think they can sit down in a night and have everything perfectly done, and it just doesn't work that way especially with colored pencil. Colored pencil is a very, very slow medium. So plan on spending a lot of time to get all of the details that you need. That will also help you to bring your work into looking more realistic, assuming that's your goal. 
Now this eye in the shadow, that one I did a little bit different than what was on my reference photo. On the reference photo, because this guy is being hit with light on the one side, the eye in the light was squintier, I drew mine a little bit bigger, and the eye in the shadow was really big, so it looked like he was making weird faces. I went ahead and evened mine out just a little bit. I made made them a little bit closer together. One is still a bit smaller than the other, but not as extreme as it was in the reference photo, because if I had left it how it was in the reference photo, everyone would just assume I drew it wrong. It, it looked weird. So I did go ahead and balance that out some, and I'll do some more detail on that eye in the shadow later on. Now this area is the same thing, where I am just blocking in where my general lights are going to go, and then blending that out with a paint thinner. As you get a few layers on the dark paper, when you blend with the paint thinner, it'll start to make it look like the paint thinner made the pencil almost erase or disappear completely. When it dries, that color will come back. So don't freak out and think you just wiped everything off with a paint thinner if it, it seems to go very translucent. It'll come back as it dries. You do want to make sure that you let that paper dry before you blend again. If you've used the paint thinner and you want to go back on top of it with your colored pencils, make sure you let it dry all the way. Otherwise, when you come on top with the colored pencil, not only will they not stick well anyway, they can, that can damage the tooth of your paper working on the wet paper. This is very messy, very loose. Again, just blocking this in, covering up the white, or I'm sorry, the black in this case of the paper. And this is another area. I am not super worried about little details. I'm not super worried about my colors. I'm going for semi-close, but I'm going to correct all of that later on. And I'm not pushing very hard. I'm keeping a fairly light hand so that I don't damage the tooth of the paper. Blending that out with the odorless mineral spirits. I'm using Mona Lisa Odorless Paint Thinner. Gamsol works exactly the same, but is less toxic, so that may be a better option for a lot of people. I have people ask why don't I just use Gamsol? Because I have a gallon of Mona Lisa Odorless Paint Thinner sitting here. I oil paint, and that's the one I use for that, so that is why I have always gone with that one. But I have tried Gamsol, and they do work the same. Gonna go ahead and block in, start tightening up the details. Each additional layer, I just get a little bit more accurate to what I want my finished result to be. You can see how I'm leaving a lot of these pencil strokes in there to create those fluffy feathers. Coming back through with the blacks and grays for the darker areas. The white and ivory with the polychromos shows up really well on this paper. It's not as opaque as with the luminance is, but for smaller details where I want to lighten things but don't need them super bright, that those pencils actually work much better on this paper than I think they do on the white paper. They show up better. I wasn't completely expecting that or to use them as much as I do here. Now I'm starting to form which direction those feathers go in. Breaking up some of the smaller details and shadows. This is another area. If you sat there and caught, looked at my reference photo and counted how many feathers go in any given direction, I'm not that close, semi-close, but I'm not copying it that exact because, again, like I mentioned earlier, I, I just don't think that it makes that big of a difference in the end result. You are welcome to copy things exact if you like, but my goal is to create that mood, that atmosphere. Still have it look realistic, still have the detail, but I don't need every little line to be exact in order to capture those things. Many of you know wildlife artist Jason Morgan, and I love what he said about this, and I'm going to word this wrong, but essentially he had commented, I think it was in one of our live streams we had done, that he kind of backs away from the piece. He used to put tons of very, very tiny, small detail in his work, and he realized, why bother? What's the point? And he would back away and decide, if from two feet away I can't see that detail, then it probably doesn't need to be there. 
Again, I am wording that completely wrong, but that's the gist. And I really like that attitude. Okay, so we skip ahead a little bit because you can see a lot of this live on the live, or in real time, I should say, on the live stream. And I'll put a link to that in the video description and have a card pop up so you can check that out. But this is where I am using my titanium white and touch up texture mixture. Wow, that was hard for me to say. I'm mixing those together and using a liner brush and painting on these really white details. Now, this is a product that is made for acrylic or for colored pencils. So it's not like using acrylic paint, which is not going to be archival. It can chip off or gel pens, not archival. That can cause problems. This is made for colored pencil. And the great thing is if you put a lot of the white on here like this and decide, well, that was too dark, or even if you do that intentionally, you know you can come back on top of it with color. This adds tooth back to the paper. So even if you had gotten to a point where color wouldn't stick anymore, you wanted to add bright yellow for some reason or whatever color, and it wouldn't really show up or it wouldn't stick, it will on top of this. This is adding that tooth. And I'm able to get these teeny tiny little lines that I just cannot get with a colored pencil by itself. So it's one of my must have items for working in colored pencil. You can just get such beautiful, great detail this way. I'm just painting in all of these clumps and clusters of the feathers, these very, very soft feathers, and they stand out so much. Again, you can watch this in real time on that live stream because I worked with this product at the end of that live stream. So if you really want to see how I'm moving the brush, how I how I mixed this, I also have a video showing you how to use this and how to mix it, um, just focusing on that. And I'll have a card pop up for that as well. Now in this area, I'm mostly hitting the tops of these feathers. I'm not trying to cover everything that I had completely or com previously done. I'm trying to hit the tops of these feathers, just the highlights. So a lot of little teeny tiny lines and little dots. And this just makes such a difference in the overall contrast of the piece. Here I'm adding little dots and squiggles in the eye. Now this looks way too light. What I'm going to do is let that dry completely. It takes five to 10 minutes before it's completely dry. It dries right away to the touch, but I do recommend let it set a little bit longer because if it's not completely dried all the way through, it'll kind of chip up when you go on top of it with another color. So I wanna let that dry for about five to 10 minutes. And then I can take my bright orange color and go on top of that and it's going to brighten that eye up so much more than what I was previously able to get. And I'll have these really great highlights now. And like I mentioned earlier, that was one of my biggest complaints about working on black paper in the past. You could never get things that bright. That's no longer an issue with this product. I can go through and brighten up anything I want and then put pencil on top of it. So you get this beautiful contrast between the dark of the paper and the, your brightest whites are actually bright white. If I were to take white paper and put it right next to the brightest I was able to get the colored pencil on its own, you can see a definite difference. It appears white up against the black, but when you put white paper next to it, you realize, yeah, that's not that bright. It's not nearly as white as it would be if I were working on, on white paper. But here now with using this, I'm able to achieve that brightness that I really wanted. Refining all of these areas now, all of the little things that you kind of skipped over before because you were just blocking things in, this is when it really matters. And at this point, this is where I will usually stop depending on the reference photo so much. Sometimes I put it away completely. Sometimes I just stop looking at it so much, but I really focus on what I think my piece needs to be better. I got what I needed out of the reference photo. I know how long feathers need to be in any given area, which direction they need to go. But at some point I will always step back and decide what should I change about mine to make it better. So here now I'm able to use that bright orange and now the eye really stands out much more like what I wanted it to. Get that black pencil very, very sharp so that I can get the tiny little details. You don't just want the pencil sharp enough to write with, you want it sharp enough to basically be a weapon. Think of the difference between a butter knife and a steak knife. You want your pencil steak knife sharp. So I'm taking some of this brown and going on top of a lot of the white that I had done. I didn't need it to be that bright, but you can still see all of the details underneath that brown. That brown worked almost like a glaze or what would be a glaze in painting where I just tinted the color. Now 
coming back through with this orange color and pulling some of that out. And this is, again, one of those things that I kind of strayed from the reference photo because there weren't that many colors in that, but I felt mine would look better if I went ahead and, and saturated or hyped up the sat color saturation in some of these areas. Getting these little specks. Polychromos works great for that because it does sharpen to such a fine point. And this photographs, this paper photographs so well because it's not a gloss. Usually taking a photo of something that has black is really hard to get a good photo of because of that reflection. Here, this paper is very matte and so it photographed beautifully. That is the finished piece. And tonight I will be working, if you're watching this video when it went live, tonight I've got the live stream of I'm drawing my chicken in graphite. And I will put a link to that in the video description as well. So I hope to see you there. This is actually my second time recording this video because the first time apparently I forgot to hit record. Seems to be a problem for me. Sometimes I question my self-proclaimed geniusness, especially given the words I make up. Hey, have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there that you can click on. It'll help you to keep up to date with all five of my new art videos every single week. I'll see you guys tomorrow or tonight for the live stream.